Well, hey there, American Farm Steppers. This is Jenny with the Grandstead Family Farm. And Donna with Hazel Bell Farm. And we are coming to y'all from Northeast Florida as two American Farm Steppers doing our best to grow our own food and share our homesteading experiences with you in hopes that you would grow a little food of your own. Yep. And this week we are talking about growing out our meat birds, our chickens specifically. Yes, growing out meat chickens because what other way... Can you take eight to 10 weeks of your life and essentially grow a year's worth of chicken? That's right. Easily. Easily. You know, (laughs) Mm -hmm. you just got to have the gumption and the motivation to do it. Mm -hmm. Set it up, learn how to butcher those chickens, Mm -hmm. and you can literally stock your freezer for the whole year. Yeah. A one and done. Yeah. Yeah. It's cool. I like it. Um, I mean, I don't like it when I'm doing it, but every time I do it after we're finished, it just feels so good. Yes. Yeah. Like, it's, oh, yeah. It's, it's nice to have a freezer full. And it's peace of mind. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Food security. And, yeah. And then we can talk about all we get from it. Yeah. So, 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 let, yeah. so let's start with, um, cause this is actually, this is a question we get often is about raising meat chickens and butchering and all of that. So mm-hmm. what is the best kind of bird I should be shopping for if I've never done this before? Yeah, well, I think it's important to note that, you know, a lot of people that aren't already raising their own food are very used to what's in the grocery store. Mm -hmm. And if you look at chicken in the grocery store, largely by and by, they are going to be your Cornish cross broilers. Right. Those are the commercial broiler breed. Right. There's a lot of criticism about raising them on, on the small really farm, is. small scale, but you know, there's a place for them. There's for sure a place for them. And I'll, I'll as long as we can yeah. source them, I absolutely will. <laughs> right. I mean, Cornish cross, they're a hybrid breed, so they're not sustainable. Right. You know, it, every time we do a batch, we got to call up the hatchery and get them from the hatchery. It's not yeah. like you can breed them yourself. And I think that's my biggest drawback with them. Yeah. Yeah. Um, But go ahead. Yeah. So, I mean, for sustainability reasons, Mm -hmm. it's not practical. But like you said, while they're available and while we can order them from the hatchery. Why not? We're going to be ordering them from the hatchery. Right. Why not? Yeah. Yeah. Um, And I've actually heard people say that they're like a a GMO meat. (laughs) Like, they're not. Like, GMO is something that's done in a lab, right? It's all about science and the cells and all that. No, this is just... To, it's a it's a, a hybrid bird. Cornish cross, it's a hybrid breed. It is a cross between a Cornish Indian game chicken and a white Plymouth rock chicken. Yes. Yes. We raised Plymouth, Plymouth rocks when I was a kid. Those were oh, our, that's you? what we raised for meat birds. Yeah. Okay. I don't even know. I mean, Cornish cross, I don't think was like a popular thing. Yeah. I don't remember that, but I was a kid. So. Yeah. I think I remember, um, seeing somewhere that the Cornish cross breed actually came onto the scene like around 1940 ish. Okay. So um, it was definitely a thing. <laughs> when it became like available. Right. Um, and that's kind of when people started like cooking whole broiler chickens. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Interesting. I'm thinking about that time frame in the space of World War Two and that. Right. So, yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, your Cornish cross is going to be like your grocery store bird. So it's going it, to be what you're used to. It's going to be what you're used to. There are some other hybrid breeds out there that I personally love, like the Freedom Ranger. Oh, they're so good. They're so good. It, it's a little bit more of a richer, kind of earthier chicken flavor. Um, they get nice and big. Mm-hmm. Um, they're a little wild to raise. They're, I mean, mm-hmm. they're Freedom Rangers. So Nice big drumsticks. Nice big drumsticks. They're a little flighty and a little wild, but... Mm -hmm. Um, the meat's really good. So we really liked them, but when we raised them for customers, I actually had a customer email me and say, nobody likes your chicken. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. Well, we do. (laughs) And it was the first time I had ever raised those to sell. For sale. Yeah. Yeah. And so people are just accustomed to the grocery store bird. That was the whole point of that. Right. Right. I I say try them and see if it works out for your family. If you're looking for something to raise at home. Now they do take a little bit longer to to raise than your Cornish. Your Cornish are going to be like eight to 10 weeks. Like we said, and the Freedom Rangers, if I remember right, were closer to like 16 weeks. Yeah, 14 okay. to 16 weeks. I think we did ours at 16 weeks. Mm-hmm. Um, I actually have a YouTube video where I raised a batch of Cornish Cross and Freedom Rangers side by side. and I forgot that. And butchered them. 
and it was like a little experiment that we did. And I'm going to link your video. Yeah, the I we really liked the Freedom Rangers. So, um, and so another thing with the Cornish Cross, like you kind of briefly touched on this, like they they get a bad rap. Mm -hmm. They get a bad rap for health problems mm -hmm. and leg problems and mm -hmm. heart issues and all that. Which, if you're watching, like, a food documentary like Food Inc. or something like that. Right. Right? Have you seen that? Yeah. Okay. So, <laughs> some, like, they will showcase the worst of the worst. You know, a chicken house where they never get in, get outside. They're crammed into one square foot per bird spaces. They're sitting in their manure with ammonia burns on their breasts. Right. Right. So if you're if you're watching that, yes, it's that bird, it's that white yeah. bird. <laughs> yes. But you can raise them more humanely than that and, and have healthy birds full of feathers even, you know? Yeah, like I, I I'm not finding that when we pasture raise our Cornish cross in chicken tractors that we're having chickens just fall over and die of heart attacks and not for the most might, part. Every now and then. You might have the occasional like leg injury, mm -hmm. but a lot of the times that's maybe because I ran it <laughs> the over tractor. with the tractor or <laughs> the 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 movable tractor the movable right. coop. <laughs> right. Not like not like an actual tractor. Diesel tractor. Right, right. Right. Um, so yeah, they're not real quick. They don't fly. No, <laughs> no they're not real quick. No. Um, so yeah, I mean, I find that I think that they probably have less problems when you're raising them at mm -hmm. home in your backyard and you're taking care of them. Right. Yeah. I really am glad we touched on that. That's an important conversation to have. Yeah. So then there's some other broilers also, right? Besides the Freedom Ranger. Um, and they're kind of all similar. They are all similar. There's the ginger broiler that a lot of hatcheries sell, mm -hmm. um, which um, they have a similar build to a Cornish cross, but they still take longer to grow out. I actually want to try them. Mm -hmm. They say that they're ready in like 12 to 14 weeks. Mm -hmm. um, still a little bit meatier, like a little bit more breast meat like the Cornish cross, whereas the Freedom Rangers have a little bit more dark meat mm -hmm. compared to breast meat. And even the breast meat on the Freedom Ranger, it's darker than your Cornish Cross breast meat. It really is. And, and it's just, I don't know, it's definitely a better flavor. It really is. I it's love really it. It's really good. Yeah. <laughs> so you have to ask yourself, like, what does your family enjoy? What I are mean, your goals? Yeah. Like, do you want to piece out a chicken and do bone-off breast mm -hmm. fillets? Mm -hmm. You know? Mm -hmm. Like, if that's what you're wanting to do, you might want to go with Cornish Cross. Mm -hmm. If you like drumsticks and chicken wings, mm -hmm. you you know, and thighs, you might want to go with Freedom Ranger. Yeah, and then you have to look at like your time frame also, because like we said, right. like one one raises out faster than the other. How how much time do you have? Right. Before hurricane season. <laughs> right. <laughs> Specifically. Right. Or, you know, like <laughs> You know, maybe you don't have access to, um, I know a lot of people are purchasing feed like once a month or something like that. Like they don't want to have three feed purchases. Right. Or, you know, there's all kinds of reasons you would want a shorter or a longer grow out. Yeah. Um, vacations, just life in general mm -hmm. as you're planning. So keep that in mind. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and just a, a little word of advice here. If you are going to raise out your own meat chickens, really try to find a feed mill where you can buy feed in bulk. Mm -hmm. You're going to um, say that's going to be your first savings. That's going to be a big savings. If you can find it for cheaper and buy it in bulk, mm -hmm. we're lucky. We have a locally, we have a feed mill here that, you know, grinds everything right there and bags it right there. And, mm -hmm. um, I mean, gosh, it's like almost half the cost. Right. Per bag. Per, per bag. 50 pound bag. You know, that's funny. Um, I had some guests over at my house last week and we were walking cows and our chickens were out cleaning up cow patties, you know, right. and I was explaining like, that's what they're supposed what to they do, do, you know? <laughs> and she said, oh, and I said, it helps cut the feed, feed bill down. These are my layers. Now. Right. And, and she said, she looked at me like kind of confused and she was like, that's, that's gross, you know? <laughs> and I said, no, they're birds. That's what they do. They're chickens. And that's part of their purpose on our farm. And, um, you know, she, she questioned, like they have a handful of layers and they're not totally suburban, not totally rural, something in between. I think they're like on an acre kind of thing, you know? And she said, um, she said, oh, well, you know, we just go, we get our one bag at a time from tractor supply. And I looked up her confused, like <laughs> said tractor right. supply, like, like really? That's, that's expensive. expensive. And she said, really? Well, yes. I guess not if you're buying for four birds. Right. You know? Right. But I don't even know how many layers I have. 
I, I really don't know. I mean, I'm going to guess 25 to 30. And then plus my meat birds I'm growing out. Right. I have somewhere like 45 to 50-ish, maybe 55. I'm not sure. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I said, oh, well, we, we buy in bulk. You know, we make the drive to the nearest mill and buy in bulk. And she said, oh, do you really even save any, though, that way by driving there? Oh, my <laughs> goodness. Like, Girl. Do I save anything? Yeah. So I asked her, how much do you spend on a bag of feed? And she said she gets a 40-pound bag for 20-ish dollars. I think she said it's like $21. Right. I said, oh, okay. Well, when we buy in bulk by the ton or the half ton, right. even the quarter ton is the first discount they offer, um, I'm buying 50 pound bags for about $10. Right. And even if you go in and buy one 50 pound bag, it's like $13. Right. Right. Yeah. I mean, that's substantially less. That's huge. Yeah. Yeah. Especially when you're considering a grow out batch, right. a big batch of, of birds. Right. Like we're so, talking about. And in the beginning, it might be kind of hard to gauge, like how much feed should I buy? Mm-hmm. Um, but we're going to get to that. In a minute. We're going to get to that. Yeah. We're going to get to that. Yeah. In a little bit. <laughs> okay. So yeah. Breeds. So breeds. Um, so besides like a broiler breed, could you just go get any old chicken and make it a meat chicken? Well, I mean, technically you can eat any old chicken, but yeah. you know, it's definitely not going to have the quality and amount of meat that you would think it would. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I don't know if, you know, w- whenever <laughs> you like butcher a rooster, the roosters always look huge and right. then you butcher them and you defeather them and they're like a bag of bones. Yeah. I, I yeah. I liken that to a <sighs> wet cat. Like if you have right. a poofy cat and then you give her a bath, yeah, <laughs> it's like nothing to her. Yeah. yeah. So that's how it's going to be with your standard like egg layers. Mm-hmm. Um, there are, it, it's a very large class of dual purpose breeds um, that are good for egg laying and also meat production. Mm-hmm. Um, I myself do not have a whole lot of experience in raising dual purpose birds, but... I have a little bit. Yeah. And I'll tell you, we weren't pleased with it compared to raising broilers. Right. I mean, broilers were bred for a reason and to Mm -hmm. be like they are. Mm -hmm. So the dual purpose breeds, they're probably going to have a little bit more meat than an egg laying breed, Mm -hmm. but... And you get eggs out of them. And you get eggs out of them. Not necessarily for production. (laughs) And they're sustainable. Uh, th- that right that's the plus they are sustainable they're sustainable so you can close the loop exactly you know in in a situation where you can't call the hatchery mm-hmm. you are going to want some dual purpose birds mm-hmm. um for meat and for eggs so right uh without further ado the first on the list is the turkin the naked neck chicken they're so ugly i know they're so uh they're they're necks. also so cute <laughs> they gross me out <laughs> I had a turkin that um, I had our, a couple. our yard stutter friend, Sarah, she um, can't have roosters where they live. And uh-huh. so they bought this turkin thinking that it was a hen and it ended up being a rooster. His name was Sweet Pete. And so it, she, and Sweet Pete ended up coming to live at my farm. Mm-hmm. And I just realized not too long ago that he was gone. Oh. I don't know what happened to him. Well, so something got Sweet Pete. Some kind of predator. Sorry, y'all. So, yeah, the turkins, um, they're said to grow out to be pretty big, Mm -hmm. um, you know, and we'll give you a decent amount of meat. Mm -hmm. And pretty much any broiler, you're going to have to wait until they're like, I'm sorry, not broiler, any dual purpose breed. Right. You're going to have to wait at least four or five months before you can even think about butchering them for meat. That's what we did, why we didn't care for them. It wasn't even that it was the time, but by the time the bird is that age, the meat starts to get tougher. Right. You know, it's like butchering an old cow. Right. Or, you know, I mean, but birds in particular, the older they get, the tougher they are. Yeah. So, um, even like your layers, if you want to keep some of these dual purpose breeds as a layer flock, and then with keeping in mind that you want to butcher them at the end of their laying life, like a lot of homesteaders do that. That's a good idea. Yeah. Um, but you're going to, it's going to be a tough meat. And so you may want to like pressure cook those or can them or something like that. Right. Yeah. That's going to be good to can or chicken noodle soup. Yeah. Or stew them. Bone broth. Yeah. You know, yeah. You that. can, you can certainly do that. But if you're looking for cuts of meat to put on the table we didn't care for any of the dual purpose that we tried delawares were one that we did yeah um and so that's that's on our list of dual purpose yeah Um, they're nice and plump but by the time we butchered them i think they were between 20 to 24 weeks and Mm -hmm. they were a bit tough yeah so we didn't care for it Hmm. yeah 
I mean, it did make really good chicken noodle soup, though. I right. will say, like, we used it. It was usable meat. We just didn't care for it, you know, on the grill or. Right, it's not something you're going to roast in the oven right. and serve as like a nice looking bird. Right. Like a table bird. No. Yeah, no. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so the Brahmas are another one that's on the list. Mm-hmm. And um, they're actually, that was one of the original meat chickens before the Cornish cross was bred. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, a lot of people raised Brahmas. Our rooster is half Brahma. They're big. Mm-hmm. They get to be big birds. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they are big. Yeah. That makes sense then. Yep. Uh, Brees. Breasts. Oh, yes. Breece, we have. How do you say it? Is it breasts or breasts? I have tomato, tomato. Okay. Um, <laughs> I, I, I say breasts. You say breasts. But I don't know if I'm right or not. I have no idea. I've heard both of them. Somebody, I'm sure, will tell us that we're right and wrong. Right. Um, I have raised these, and I did like them a lot. Okay. We did like them. Emily has these, too, doesn't she? She has. I don't yeah. think she has okay. them. Yeah. I don't think she does them, like, regularly. But yeah, yeah. yeah they're they, supposed to have really good flavor. Excellent flavor. Excellent egg layers too. Mm-hmm. <laughs> We're looking at talking each other us, like, what are we doing? Talking myself <laughs> into some dual purpose chickens right now is mm-hmm. what I'm doing in my head. Yeah, they were good, actually. And, you know, the only reason that I stopped doing those was because we did a big butcher. Okay. We moved. Okay. And then the person I was getting them from was not doing them anymore, as far as chicks go. Right. We might we might need to start that back up. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Buff Orpingtons. I actually have a couple Buff Orpingtons in the too. backyard right now. I do too. I have, a, I have a few Orpingtons as well. But they're great layers. Yeah, they are good layers. They're, mine always go broody. Yes. Yeah, so, well, that's really good for sustainability. That's good. Yeah. I mean, if you can't get to the hatchery, you're mm-hmm. definitely going to want you a broody hen. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, Orpingtons are really friendly, too. Yeah, they are. They are one of those birds that you can have with kids who want to carry their birds around. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> yeah, very docile. So another good choice for a dual purpose, uh, wine a dot. Wine dot? Wine a dot. A tomato tomato. Tomato tomato, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Those are good. so pretty. Mm-hmm. And see, that's my thing. Like, I don't know. I don't think I would want to butcher a chicken that was that pretty. Really? Yeah, the laced ones, they're so pretty. They are pretty. It sounds I mean, I guess a little if I was hungry <laughs> and I really needed to butcher the chicken, right. the chicken would go. But right. If I had a choice, butcher the ugly ones. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm is, sorry, is it, not sorry. Is okay. it this the conversation we have with not farm people all the time about our animals, Jenny? <laughs> oh, okay, what about Australorps? Yes. Yep. I actually have some of those, too. A lot of people raise these as a dual purpose. They those do make great yeah, layers, too. They're excellent layers excellent for production. Layers. Yeah, um, we have butchered them, not because we've raised a batch of them, but just right. because we had them and needed to be butchered. Here and there. Right. And um, same thing. They had to be stew meat. Yeah. I mean, I think all of these birds kind of fall into the category of, like, it's how grandma did it. Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. it was grandma going out into the backyard and getting a chicken and wringing its neck mm-hmm. and just doing, like, one or two chickens at a time. Right. And you don't really hear of many people doing, like, a whole batch. Well, there was of, no, like, deep freezer in every home. Right. You know? Right. That wasn't a thing. I mean, even like these days, like you don't hear of somebody doing a whole batch of dual purpose meat chickens. No, Australorps I see a lot of though. Do you? Yeah, yeah, some homestead channels on YouTube. Okay. Mm-hmm. That's, okay. that's a popular one. Okay. Any others? Speckled Sussex, mm-hmm. Dominiques, mm-hmm. Jersey Giants. Oh, yeah. I'm actually. They're a good layer too. Yeah. I'm actually <laughs> about to help some friends butcher some Jersey Giants that they have raised out that they're done with. So um, I'll be super interested to see how those birds turn out. Yeah. Because they're big. Yeah, they are big. They're big birds. I've never had a Jersey Giant hen. We used to have a Jersey Giant rooster when we lived out in Texas, mm-hmm. and it was like the biggest chicken ever. We had a hen, and she was our biggest chicken ever, Gosh. and she didn't do any. She just sat around. She was so lazy. She was the laziest bird ever. She just sat there. I guess that's why she was so big. Big, large, right. but <laughs> <laughs> she just sat. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay, so Plymouth Rocks. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah, I could see that. Yeah, well, that's that's one of the parents of the Cornish Cross hybrid we mentioned, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, and then I do hear um, some homesteaders talk about the Buckeyes. Okay. As well for a meat bird. They're supposed to be a good dual purpose meat I don't bird. know anything about them. Yeah, I don't know a whole lot about them. I do know that they're good for the cold. Okay. You know, maybe so that's why. Maybe that's why. We're in Florida. <laughs> we don't have that. <laughs> What's cold? Uh, the Dorking is another popular one that you hear about that grow out to be a de uh, pretty decent size. Mm -hmm. They're funny little looking birds, too. They are. They're kind of squatty. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Uh, the Dark Cornish. Which is, is it similar to a Cornish cross? Uh, yeah, I mean, it's compact and it has a lot of breast meat. Okay. Um, a good layer of brown eggs. Okay. Yep. All right. Yep. Nice. Also the Cornish. Also the Cornish and the white and rock. The white rock, yep. The Max on YouTube, they gave up raising um, Cornish Cross. And so they were trying to do like their own meat chickens and they got a bunch of white rocks and I don't remember the other breed, but they were crossing their own mm -hmm. and, and mm -hmm. trying to like find the perfect combination of bird that was good for their liking. Cool. Um, so that would be kind of a fun thing to do. Yeah. You know, do what works for you. Yeah. All, All right. right. Well, let's talk about feed. Yeah. You want to talk about feed or you want to talk about where to get these breeds? Yeah. I mean, well, you've got choices when it comes to your chicks. Um, of course, you know, you can always go to your local feed store, mm -hmm. um, which are probably only <clears throat> going to have them seasonally. Once or twice a year. Right. Unless you have a really cool place like Charlie's Chicks, like we do. Yes. Where they have chicks like year round. Yes. They have pretty much any kind of bird that yeah. I mean like his selection is huge they have really cool stuff they have some like um more like exotic kind of chickens that you don't necessarily find everywhere that you would get at your feed store um you know you could you could probably order them yeah but um, you could probably order them they might be a yeah. little bit cheaper if you order them but mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. if you had a place like that and you wanted to just support a local business that's cool too yeah yeah they have a lot of cool stuff and then they have your run-of-the-mill stuff that most people are looking for and they also have your cornish cross and, and Freedom Rangers, stuff like that. Right. The cool thing about Charlie is if you go visit there, and I didn't mean for this to be a Charlie's plug, but um, right. <laughs> he's sponsoring our convention, so <laughs> thanks, Charlie. <laughs> um, the cool thing about it is they also run chicken tractors out front, and they supply to the local CSAs. And so you can see in person what, what a tractor setup looks like. Right. Um, and then, you know, and then you can visit, like, the hatchery, um, like the chicken houses where they keep the chicks and that right. kind of thing. And then they also sell non GMO feed. So yeah. like you can get on a schedule. Right. So they're pretty cool. in Baldwin nice. here in Florida. Nice. Cool people. So yeah, your local people, uh, your local feed store, but again, that's going to be seasonal. Mm -hmm. uh, they're only going to order so many different varieties. Um, mm -hmm. So, you know, if there's like a specific meat bird you're actually looking for that you know that you want, hatchery might be the best choice. Mm -hmm. um, I always recommend to order from a hatchery that is at least in your region. Right. Um, especially if you're ordering uh, early in the year when it's still really cold out, mm -hmm. um, you know, because baby chicks need heat and mm -hmm. they can die in the cold right so um yeah and they're getting shipped so like. right you're <laughs> buying them from the hatchery they're getting shipped to the post office and on that note i'll say if you the more you order together the better for the birds but also the better for your wallet so like go in with a friend yeah. and get a bunch i noticed um in the last few orders that we placed um i had a i had one smaller order i had like a great big that's what it was i had a great big order and so it came in two right. boxes a big box and, and a, a smaller box. box. The big box, they were all fine. They were all chipper. Yep. All of them survived. They did great. The little box, not so much. Right. Um, they mostly died. Um, several were dead upon arrival. And then the most of the rest, I think like two out of 20 lived. Yeah. And, you know, the rest of them died throughout the first day that I had them. Now the hatchery replaced them. So like, right. there's that, but I don't want to have to deal with that. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So yeah, order a big a big bunch. Find out like how many they ship in each box and try to get that even amount. And then again, if you order with a friend, you can get a good a good bulk discount, and because uh, the price per bird goes down with the more that you order. Yes. 
We've done that several times. Yeah, and 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 have your brooder set up. Like if you if you know that you've ordered meat chickens, or right. you know you're going to go to the feed store and pick up your chicks, do everybody a favor and just have that brooder set up and ready to go. That way, when you get the chicks home, mm-hmm. you can dip their beaks in water immediately mm-hmm. and get them into a warm brooder. Yep. Because um, at that point, they are really going to be craving some heat and some water. Mm-hmm. Really, for the first day or so, I really find that they don't eat a whole lot. Right. Of course, you always have feed in there for them, but they really want that water and that heat on that first day in the brooder. So. Yeah, water especially. Have that set up and ready to go. Mm-hmm. Be careful with what waterer you put in there, too, because baby chicks are dumb. Yeah. I mean, they will get into the water and, and die. And die. They will get yeah. cold and Especially they will die. your Cornish cross. I know. Like, what so is their problem? Dumb. They really are stupid. Um, yeah, they'll want to swim in it, and they're not waterfowl, so, like, they can't regulate body heat. And, yeah. And, yeah, they'll die. Yeah. So you can take, like, little, like, I've done, like, fish tank pebbles before mm-hmm. and put little pebbles in the bottom of the water. Mm-hmm. That way it's just not deep enough for them to fall in there and drown. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. Um, definitely pay attention to stuff like that. Yep. For sure. And then the good rule of thumb for heat lamp is one heat lamp for every 25 chickens. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't have enough heat lamps this year. I'm like... Why am I losing birds? <laughs> I don't mean to laugh about it, but it was, I'm laughing at myself, not the fact that I lost birds. Right. But yeah, they they were all huddled together, and whoever was on the bottom didn't make it. Right. So yeah, definitely. Yeah, one one to twenty five at least. Yeah, at least. Yeah. Um, so feed. Let's talk feeding meat chickens. Yeah, let's. Because boy, they eat a lot. Yeah. I'm, yeah, I am just posted um, a blog post on our website, AmericanFarmsteaders.com. Yes, you just posted a blog post about raising broilers and how much feed do meat chickens eat. Yes. so um, A lot. A lot is the answer. <laughs> so this is specifically to your Cornish cross. Um, right. Because those birds that are dual purpose, they're not going to eat as much and they're going to take longer um, and there's no like real good chart for that. There's no real good information no. for that. So um, you'll just you'll just have to play around with numbers and keep track and figure that out. So for your Cornish cross, which is what most people are growing out for meat, that's why we went with this. Um, your birds are going to eat about 22 and a half pounds over the course of 11 weeks. Okay. Now I don't recommend 11 weeks, but life happens. Right. Like sometimes. We've gone 12 weeks, you know, and they're laying eggs. <laughs> I've kept Cornish cross that long and, and yeah. had zero issues. Yeah. I've had a Cornish cross <laughs> live to be three and a half years old. Right. Oh, yeah. We've had a couple like that. You know? Yeah. And he was giant. Yeah. We had a big fat one that would, um, it, it was just like she was too small to butcher when we butchered. So we kept right. her. Kind That's of like there's always me. one like that, there's right? There's always one like that, yeah. And so we kept her. And she lived a couple of years, but every day I had kept, a, my chickens were next to my garden and I had right. a, a wagon between the two. And every day she would jump up into the wagon and leave an egg. <laughs> it was the funniest thing. And then, I mean, she didn't live as long as my other egg layers, you right. know, but, and I know it was her. I saw her do it. It was hilarious. Right. So she could still jump up into the wagon, even though she was a meat bird and had right. like meat bird legs. Right. She did it. So. Hmm. So, yeah, I don't recommend going past 10 weeks. Um, Once you hit eight weeks, the feed conversion reduces significantly. So, like, eight weeks is your target. Eight to 10 is is our primary goal. After eight, yes, they will still grow, but they will eat a lot more for what they put on. For what they're gaining. Right. So, 10 is our favorite. Nine to 10 is our favorite. Um, but just know that your your best feed conversion is at eight weeks. And so you've got here in your blog post that if you're raising 50 birds, mm-hmm. you would need about 1,132 and a half pounds of feed. So that's mm-hmm. 23 50 pound bags of feed. Mm-hmm. But that's for 11 weeks. Right. And right. Yes. And that that's 50 birds. Right. right. So for the average family eating one chicken per week, yeah. you know, about one, right. chicken, one chicken per week. So. Right. Yeah. I would, I would agree with your numbers there because mm-hmm. when I do a batch of 50, I will at least go, okay, first off. Jenny keeps really good records. 
I, I, I did for years. Yeah. I don't do that so much anymore because I did it for so many years. Well, you're kind of like, you're on your game, you know, you know what to do. So I start my meat birds out on game chicken starter because mm -hmm. it has 28% protein on it. Mm -hmm. And so I'll do one or two bags of that mm -hmm. in the very beginning and start them on that. And then I switch them to chick starter. Mm -hmm. Once I switch them to chick starter for 50 chickens, mm -hmm. I'll get 15 bags of feed mm -hmm. and that carries me all the way through the end. Okay. But that's butchering it at like eight weeks. Right. Right. Your yeah. stat was for 11 weeks. Right. So it's right. probably, it's probably really close. Yeah. The reason I did 11 weeks is I kept finding that marker amongst Tractor Supply, right? Do more Purina. I was like, why? Right. Why? Why are they doing? Why are they putting that out there? Right. But because their feed quality is lower than probably what we're feeding, and people so. are actually having to feed their birds for eleven weeks to grow them out because they're having right. poor nutrition. Right. I'm sorry. Right. Darn birds a lot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So um, on this. On this, how much do you feed them? So in the first week, um, your day-old chicks, when you get them in the mail, are going to weigh about an ounce and a half. Okay. Okay. In the first week, they're going to eat about five ounces of feed for the whole week. You're, you want to make sure you start them on the starter, like you said, at least a 20% protein. So you're right. doing game, game bird feed? Game that's bird 28%? feed, yes, 28%. Okay. So in that first week, they're going to eat about 40% of their own body weight. They're going to gain, and you're going to increase for the second week about four, um, I'm sorry, you're going to increase it by 10 ounces for the week per bird. Right. So this was if you were raising one bird, right? Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, you know, the more you do it, the more batches that you do, the, you know, you realize, like, how many pounds is a scoop of feed kind of thing. Right. And you start measuring in scoops, not necessarily pounds or ounces. Right. Um, by the, yeah, so by the, the, the third week, they're getting 14 ounces. And then after that, you're going to increase them four ounces per week per bird. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. So that 20% starter is recommended for at least the first three weeks. And yeah. then you can drop down to an 18% mm -hmm. and, and it doesn't necessarily slow the growth down, but they don't, their growth rate is slower than what it was. Right. Even though they are growing. Um, so they don't need that 20% anymore. We choose to leave them on 20% feed for the life. Yeah. I go and get 15 bags and call it done. Yeah, exactly. You know? Exactly. Now your 18% is going to cost a little less. Yeah. But um, honestly, like our options for the mill that we buy from are 16%. Or 20%. Okay. So I just go with the 20. Okay. The yeah. 16 for the layers. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Um, so, okay, here's the thing. Mm -hmm. You people that are listening out there, bored with don't numbers. <laughs> get, don't get analysis paralysis when you hear these numbers and yeah. go, oh my gosh, no, I can't figure that out. Mm -hmm. No. Just get the meat birds. Mm -hmm. Just go out. You know, it, you know that you're going to buy multiple bags of feed. So just go ahead and go mm -hmm. out, buy five bags or so, right. and just see how it goes. Right. Like you don't have to measure their food. You know, a good rule of thumb is uh, in the first, uh, is it one week or two weeks that you want to keep their feeders 100% full? Oh, two weeks. Two weeks. For the first two weeks. See, like how yeah. many years have I been doing this? Yeah. Um, for the first two weeks, you want to keep their feeders full 24-7. Mm -hmm. Let them have as much as they Let want. Let them have as much as they want. After two weeks, you're keeping their feeders full from sunup to sundown. Mm -hmm. And that's how you measure your feed. Right. All right, good note on feed, feeders. Yeah. Um, so speaking of feeders, what kind of feeders do you need? <laughs> Some people would totally disagree with this, but mm -hmm. more often than not, I ground feed my meat chickens. Me too. When they're in the brooder, I do use feeders in the brooder, but right. once they get big and they're out on pasture, mm -hmm. I'm just ground feeding those birds. Once they're on grass. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Me too. Um, throwing the feed to the ground, it's okay. They're not... I mean, they're chickens. They scratch on the ground. Yeah, they're birds. You know, and do you lose a little bit of feed to the ground? Mm. Maybe. Yeah, I find, though, if you wet it first... Right, that's another Especially if point. you're using, like, a, a powder, powdery kind of grind um, feed. Yeah. Wetting it helps. Yeah, so soaking your feed. 
Yeah, so let's talk about saving some money on this, all this feed. Right, because you're buying a lot of feed for those 50 meat chickens. So, right. um, you know, if you can get like a, I do mine in a 35-gallon barrel. Mm-hmm. I fill it halfway up with dry feed, and then I top the whole thing off with water. Yeah. And you let that sit for, it takes about two days for it to all totally soak in. But, I mean, it fluffs up your whole <clears throat> barrel of feed. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, it makes the feed like a like a wet cornbread, mm-hmm. you know, like a really... It swells. It swells, and it makes yeah. so much more feed, so... Right, um, and if you let it ferment, you know, yeah. for some time, like after a couple of days, you'll start to notice a slight alcohol smell yeah. with the fermentation. We actually add raw milk to ours, and uh-huh. so it starts to smell like cheese. Yeah. Like, it smells delicious, to yeah. be honest with you, like a sweet right. cheese. Right. Um, so you'll smell that fermentation, and um, that that's a good thing for the chickens and their digestive systems. It's a like very it's, good thing. It's making it's unlocking nutrients for them, making it more bioavailable, and it's also adding probiotics to their gut. Right. All good. I mean, you're basically starting the digestive process for them mm-hmm. by breaking down that feed by fermenting it, mm-hmm. so they can absorb more of the nutrients. So they need less. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I have actually seen this over and over again, and I haven't been doing that with the current batch that I have, and they're taking longer. Yeah. I haven't been doing it because the barrel that I use with the right lid that fits is on the other side of the property feeding another kind of animal. So. Well, this sounds exactly like my life right now because mm-hmm. the batch of meat chickens that I have right now, I'm not fermenting their feed because their barrel is the blue barrel that's down there by my chestnut trees. Too that far from water. Well, I was using it for the freeze because right. my chestnut trees are babies. And right. so I did the barrel of water yeah. and then covered the barrel of water and the tree to keep everybody from freezing. Yeah, and yeah. So my fermentation barrel is down there. But I think we're done with freezes. So I think so, too. I we, need to get it back down here so I can use it. I said, I, I said we need more <laughs> barrels is what we need, right. you know. But, yeah, so um, that's the number one trick I would give you to reduce the cost of your feed bill. Um, secondly, supplement. Yeah. Um, and kitchen as scraps, note, garden scraps. Go as ahead. a side note about soaking your feed, tractor supply feed does not soak. Like it's like pellets, isn't it? It's weird. Don't try to soak the tractor supply feed. It it's not good. Right. Sorry. Yeah. No, that's okay. No, we do. Ours is a ground. What we get from a mill is a ground, uh, a grind, and it's yeah. it's powdery fine. Um, so yeah, another thing I was going to say, kitchen and garden scraps, add that to their diet. Yeah. Um, not only that, but like having them on grass, right? Yeah. Um, so running them on grass, um, they're going to pick up bugs, extra mm-hmm. protein. They're going to pick up grass, extra yep. nutrients. And it's just, it's good for them. You right. Know, green. Um, but yeah. And then, like I said, ours get skim milk because they're spoiled. Right. <laughs> <laughs> because we have it. Because you have it. I mean, we, like, we have it. You have to do something with it. Right. Nobody's going to buy the skim milk. Right. We don't really want to make cheese with skim milk when we can have whole fat cheese. Right. Like, no thank you. Yeah. No thank you. So water. hmm So for your meat birds, when they're little, um, I don't know, this isn't hard, y'all. It's right. not. I mean, just make sure they don't run out of water. Make sure they don't run out of water. And here's another, like, hard lesson that you'll learn is, like, the water that I have, the lid goes, like, there's a lid on the top of it, you know? Right. you got to put your lids back on there because they will literally fly into the water and drown in the huge five-gallon oh water. That's not the kind of water we have. <laughs> so, I mean, if you have a, a lid on your waterer, mm-hmm. put your lid back on the water. I know it's tempting just to stick a hose in there and turn the mm-hmm. hose on and just leave it like that. Don't do it. You'll lose birds. You will lose birds. Yeah, so um, I have a whole post about the um, best chicken waterer also. So you can check that out if you want. Um, but, like, honestly, it's, it's not hard. Like, just make right. sure they don't run out of water. Right. You'd be surprised. The thing about giving chickens, meat chickens, water, like even right now, my 40 to 50 meat birds, um, they're about two to three weeks out from butcher and they go through twice as much water as my layer flock of 25. Yeah. They go through a ton of water. Yeah. Yeah. So much water. Um, and it's February. Like, so if you're doing this in July, 
but right. you just don't want to lose them to heat stroke. They are more prone to heat stroke and heart attacks and stuff like that. So you want to make sure they just don't run out. Especially in the summer. Mm -hmm. I mean, Cornish Cross, they were not built mm -mm. for Florida summers. No. It's not good. We don't do meat birds at all in the summer. Not only is it gross to butcher chickens when it's 98 degrees outside, the birds are miserable in right. the summertime. So we just don't do them. Well, and I find it takes longer to grow them out. Like the feed, right. the feed conversion. And so it ends up costing too much. So we just don't do it. Yeah. They're burning too many calories panting. Right. I guess so. <laughs> yeah. Um, so there is one waterer that I will say is um, excellent bang for your buck. And that's any brand. There's several brands out there. So I won't plug any one brand, but it's just a double walled waterer. Yeah. And so that's the kind you can get them in different sizes, get the biggest one you can afford. There's like, like the a seven ones. gallon one. Yes. Yeah. That's what I have with my meat chickens yeah, right now. That's the best thing. So yeah. fill it up. It works like with a vacuum kind of suction and, um, at least once a day. Fill yeah. Up. And, and that should be good. They hold up, they weather well. Um, you know, they easy to clean. You want to make sure that you're not accumulating too much algae. They're not plastic so that you know, even a lot of these plastic waters that say they're like UV protected or whatever, like, no, no they still crack from they crack. They do not last. The handle pops off, which leaves a hole right. on the top and then you lose your vacuum and then it'll never hold water. <laughs> like it's such a pain in the butt. It's ridiculous. Yeah. With something like chicken waterers, it's, you truly get what you pay for. Mm -hmm. Spend the money on the metal expensive one. I agree. And you'll, you won't be sorry. Yeah. I've had my metal one for a few years now. Mm -hmm. Plastic ones, lucky to last a year. Mm -hmm. So. So that brings us up to butchering. Yes. Right? So we do have a butcher guide on our website also. Um, it's an easy downloadable full of pictures, very clear instructions. Um, and then we offer a hands-on class every now and then. I have had a few people ask, when are we going to have a class? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know when we're, well, I mean, we've got the convention coming up. I'm going to be butchering chickens all day at the convention. Right. Um, I also just put up a blog post that is free, mm -hmm. you know, where you can read about butchering chickens. Um, the guide that we have on our website is a little bit more detailed and mm -hmm. little bit, it's much it's more very thorough. detailed. Yeah, it's very detailed. And it's literally about raising meat chickens from, you know, start to actual finish. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. um, it's got all the details in there where the blog post just, you know, kind of touches on some things here and there. But um, it'll give you a good overview on butchering chickens because mm -hmm. it's really not that hard. I think the most important thing with butchering chickens is just having the appropriate tools, mm -hmm. having them set up in a way that makes sense, right. um, you know, to where your workspace just flows. Mm -hmm. um, and then, I mean, once you butcher a couple of chickens, you pretty much got it. Yeah. It's like riding a bike. Right. Mm -hmm. So anyone could do it. Anybody can do it. And I mean, you know, just get the meat chickens and get the materials to butcher them mm -hmm. and just do it. Just do it. You know, if you know that you're going to be doing this year after year after year, it might be smart to invest in a plucker. Mm -hmm. um, if you are unsure, they make the little pluckers that go on the drills. Right. You know, you just put it on a drill and hit the drill button and it spins. You have to have somebody hold the chicken. Mm -hmm. So you could always use that for the first time. Or if you you're can just doing pluck. five or a handful of birds, you could hand pluck them. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, we I used will... to hand pluck. Right. <laughs> if we did it, it worked. I mean, we right. only invested in a plucker because we started doing so many at a time. Right. You know? Right. And so as long as you have the proper tools and you're scalding your birds properly, right. but your meat chickens is not that bad. No, it's not that bad. Yeah. Anybody can do it. Yeah. So yeah, y'all check out the resources on the blog. Um, you can just go and search through all of our chicken posts. Mm -hmm. um, we got a lot of meat chicken stuff on there. So. We sure do. Um, and then the meat chicken guide from Hatchery to Butcher Day is in our shop on our website. And if you're local, come see us at the convention and you can watch us butcher chickens all day long. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Amongst other things. Amongst other things. It'll be fun. Yes. All right. Well, we'll talk to you guys next week. All right. Sounds good, y'all. Bye. Bye.